because once you see one problem, it's just more of the same. Okay, it's all reading and figuring out what they're giving you to plug in where. Um, so on this first example, the crazy caramel corn company has determined that the percentage of kernels that pop rises and then falls as the temperature of the oil of the kernels are cooked in increases. It modeled this trend using the equation. Okay, where P, I don't really care what the equation is, I'm just searching for what the variables mean. P represents the percent of kernels that pop. And T represents the temperature of the oil. Now, if the temperature is not hot enough, not a lot of kernels are going to pop. If it's too hot, they're all going to pop, but we're going to have some burned popcorn. We ran into a question that was using this similar thing the other day. Um, so algebraically determine the temperature. So which variable are we going to solve for if they're saying determine the temperature? Okay, so we're looking for T, at which the highest percentage of kernels pop. Now, highest and lowest are keywords that mean vertex. We essentially want the vertex. So the vertex is computed by, well, the x coordinate of the vertex, which in this case is our t. Does everyone agree that t is like our x here? It's our input. So t equals negative b over 2a. You need to memorize that formula. That's how we find the vertex. Sounds like a great thing to add to your flashcard quizzes, which you escaped, so you're probably going to have two next week. So, vertex formula. We'll say x equals negative b over 2a. You just have to memorize that. Now, that's part of the quadratic formula. That's the original, original part of the quadratic formula, the negative b right before the plus or minus part and then all over 2a. The negative b over 2a gives you the x coordinate of your vertex. So in this particular case, b is 2.8, so that would be negative 2.8, all over 2 times this a value. So double that is negative 2 over 250. And just watch me on my calculator, make sure I type this in correct. Negative 2.8 divided by, when you divide by a fraction, Keep your fraction in parentheses, negative 2 over 250. And I get 350. So the temperature at which I will get the highest percentage is 350. That's the first answer. Determine the temperature. Got it. Also determine the percent that will be popped at this temperature. So now that we know T, We'll just, we just have to plug it in, right? So if I take this formula, negative 1 over 250 times 350 squared plus 2.8 times 350 minus 394, 96%. You just plug it in and you get 96%. So that would be a point on this graph, by the way. T is 350, which makes the percentage 96%. Okay? Now, using a calculator, I'm going to graph this function. So just watch, just for the sake of time. What's an appropriate window? They tell you percentage. That's my Y coordinate. It has to be greater than 0. Obviously, you're not going to pop a negative percentage. So zero up to, what's the maximum percentage you might pop? 100. And for time, what's, or temperature, what's the, what's the kind of, right, 350 degrees we just got. So we are up in that higher range. So maybe you want to go like zero to 400 degrees. And we see a pretty nice formula. Now my x, I only went up to 400. I probably should have gone up even higher, right? So if I want to, I could just go up to like 600 and maybe that'll do something good. So I just found my vertex by hand. Negative b over 2a, got my answer for my x coordinate, plugged it back in, got the y. I could second trace this, right? Second trace and I'd be looking for the maximum and it's going to give me the same point. 
maximum, left bound, enter, right bound, we scroll all the way over to the right of it, there's my cursor, enter, enter, and this is what we just got, 350, 96. We just did it by hand. And we had to do it by hand because they said algebraically. So it's a little formula you have to memorize, which is why I just put it on the flashcard. Does that make sense? Okay. Using the zero command on your calculator, determine to the nearest degree the two temperatures at which P equals zero. So the percentage is zero here and here, agreed? Okay, so second trace, find your zeros. We know how to do this, right? So I'm gonna bring that to the left of my first zero, which happens to be off the screen, which is okay. Then to the right of my zero, and there's a zero at 195. And I'll do it again. For this zero over here, I'm going to bring my cursor to the left of it. There it is, enter, and then go to the right of it. Enter, enter. And I get 504.9, which is 505. So what we get from that is, if you pop your popcorn at 195 degrees, nothing's going to pop. It's not hot enough. Zero percent are going to pop. If you do it at 505, zero percent are going to pop. I would think they would just probably light on fire. Okay? I'm just guessing. I'm trying to make sense of it all. Um, so if a typical batch of popcorn consists of 800 kernels, how many does the crazy caramel corn company expect to pop at the optimal temperature. What was the optimal temperature? 350. So we expect 96% of the 800 to pop then, right? 96% of 800. If you know how to calculate a basic percent, 800 times 0.96, that's 768 kernels. So they realize that 100% of the kernels is probably never going to happen, right? Because if you go too hot, some of them are going to burn. Even though you pop them all, the ones, ones would end up burned and maybe on fire. Do you follow? Okay. So just reading, interpreting. You guys got your spiral on the way in, and here's your homework. If you're doing anything, I know I'm forgetting on this. Last card quiz. I heard there's a little Halloween thing in the village that I was thinking maybe my two-year-old would like. Yeah, do you, why do they have those like Halloween?